Here's an old classic right here. God, I remember when I got this one. It's a $50 one right there. Look at it. It's all banged up and stuff. Look at all the use I got out of this thing. I still love it. This is the one I want them to break. This one. Okay. Hey guys, welcome to the Monday Night Magic Special. I was just getting mic'd up. My name's Attilio with Theater Magic. I'm inside the Beach House Studios. We're gonna celebrate sponge balls tonight. This is one of the classes from The Secrets of Conjuring and Magic. And every Tuesday night, I go live in the Zoom room for a double header. We start off with the Levitator. This is a very cool class. Guys, if you've taken that class, you know that we get into some really interesting methods and the psychology behind all the movements is fun to learn. I'll tell you what. So we have the levitator class every week at 7 p.m. because I'm always getting new students and I really encourage everybody, take that class. You're gonna learn things. We're gonna pull out fundamentals and how they apply using levitation magic. So you really get into a lot of them. When you build an awareness of those fundamentals, it changes the way you approach magic completely. Let's get into it. Let's start off with my little carrying case. Look, I brought it. I brought my set here tonight because we're celebrating. Let the festivities begin. Here's how I carry my, my sponge balls. This is like a mini umbrella holder. I carry my sponge balls inside this, and this goes in my bag. So I always try to find little, I always put my props in some sort of container to protect them. And every, every little prop goes into some sort of, even decks, cards. So this is how I carry my sponge balls. These are my traveling sponge balls. This is a super soft sponge ball. I, I work with only the super soft balls. I don't like the other balls. These super soft are so much nicer. The balls that we put inside our kit is a super soft ball. These are the sponge balls. I carry mine here. I have the uh, the brass purse inside also. This is just a nice umbrella case. And it fits perfect. So when I go to a gig, I usually put all my items in separate containers, especially if they're an isolated prop. I'll just be able to throw those into a bag and boom, you've got everything that you need. Everything's protected. And then I also carry like an accessory box. It depends on the size, depending on how many accessories I'm pulling in. But tonight I'm gonna to talk about an accessory that would go with your sponge balls. Actually, it's one of our classes and you guys might already have it. A lot of the items that are in the Secrets of Conjuring and Magic are these these are the effects that all magicians get when they first get into magic. You know, they, they visit a magic shop. It's got all these things in the counter. You could spend hours in there. I'll tell you what, that, that is insane. Just that. The amount of time a magician will scope through a magic shop or a magic catalog. We're in La La Land. Give me an amen on that one. I just wanted to say hello to you guys. Like and share this broadcast out. That would give me some definition for sure. So Monday nights I go live every week. We're like a wheelhouse here. Every week, every day, Tuesday nights, we have the secrets of conjuring and magic. This is awesome. 155 different classes. So recently I taught the color changing ball to jumbo square. This is one of our classes. It's like sold by itself, but it's a complete gimmick and self-contained and very powerful and very easy to do. So we're gonna look at that right now. So let me go to this. This is a very clever design. As you can see, there's a hole here. So look how this is made. This goes right here. When you set this up and you turn this inside out around the ball, look at this, this is so cool. Okay, so it becomes a ball. Now this, this is the side they never see. And if you're working with sponge balls, these are two inch, these are two inch sponge balls. These are three inch sponge balls. And I always use the three inch now. I don't even use these. But if I was gonna do this, I would have to use some of these small ones. I would be doing a sponge ball routine. And at some point, I'm going to bring out this ball. I could do many different ways of getting that. I could be splitting the balls like this. I could put this down, grab that, split it, and then I have this in my hand. Now it looks like this. So the audience at this point can't tell the difference. How to utilize this in a regular sponge ball routine. 
And when you use it in a sponge ball routine, it becomes a bridge. Now this is really cool. When you become aware of bridges and how to install a bridge into a routine, which extends your routine and makes it, gives it another dimension, has a different sightseeing tour. There's different effects. This is so strong. So it really can go into any sponge ball routine, but you really want to be working with the red sponge balls. I usually work with these larger balls all the time, but if I was going to incorporate the bridge, I would just switch to the smaller balls because I teach in the session how to switch this in by using the flurry. It's where the balls are multiplying and one of the multiplying looks like this and it looks just like any of the balls and I move forward, I upstage where all the balls are on the table and I reminisce about when I was a kid in front of my family after dinner and I do this little routine. Here's another clip explaining this gimmick, how it fits with sponge balls. It's really clever. It's called color changing ball to jumbo square. This is pretty cool. This is one of the classes that's in the in the 150 classes. Now sponge balls is in volume one. Let's say I'm doing my routine. I'll have this in the table and it's when I'm doing the splits and the whole flurry scene and I'm putting them under the table. And then I'll pick up this ball and I say, you know, I start, when I started doing magic after dinner, I would do magic for my family. And I would do something like this with the sponge ball where I asked them which hand's the ball in. And then they said, this hand? And I say, well, that's, that's a, it's not a ball, it's a square. This hand, it's, it's not red, it's black, okay? And you can see how powerful that is because you they keep seeing a ball all the time. So when you shoo in the gimmick, the assumption is there. Nobody is, this has no heat on it whatsoever. It looks exactly like the other ball. So when you show your hand empty and just place this ball into the hand and say, let me, which hand's it in? They might've gotten a flash of the red as it went from this hand into this hand. It doesn't matter what hand they say. Where's the red ball is the question. They say this one, boom, no, that's it. This is a square. This is not a ball. Hold on a second. Which hand? This is, this is not red. This is black. Okay, let's go back to the routine. And you have the other balls on the table so you can pick up where you were and you put this nice extension onto the routine. It's called a bridge. Isn't that cool? Here, let's take another look at another over here. Look what I did here. This is down here. This is the gimmick. If I was to bring that in, I could have some balls over here that I got and then I can do the flurry effect. I'll show you the more detail on the flurry effect. You can put these in your pocket right? And then when you go in your pocket, you can steal it again and do the flurry effect. And I could put this one down here and then steal the gimmick and then boop, split one more. And now I have the gimmick in my hand. I say, hey, let's play a little game. And I keep moving the ball, keeping the, this part of the ball on the backside towards me. That's important, all those details, because what we're talking about is the frame here. What does the audience see? You want them to see a relaxed performer, so all the movement is seamless. There's no hesitation or hiccup. There's no bumps in the road. Everything just smoothly goes through. Everything is seems what it's supposed to be. And the audience can follow. This is not frustrating for them. Follow, making it easy for them to follow the storyline, boom. Without saying a word to music, it's pretty powerful. I did that for many, many years. I traveled the world, different countries all over because I never spoke in the show. All my act was done to music. I was a stage manipulator, but it communicated. It was all visual. We got a great class every Tuesday night at seven o'clock. We do the levitator class. Yes, the levitator master class at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then we do the secrets of conjuring and magic at 8 p.m. This is a double header on Tuesday night, starting with the levitator at seven, which which is part of the secrets of conjuring and magic. It's in volume one. All my students should get this class. If you're interested in taking these classes, guys, just text 407, here we go, 407-214-5178. Text session to 407-214-5178. I'll give you an invite to one of my live sessions in the Zoom room, and these are cool. Hey, I've got something really special. If you're getting the emails, be on the lookout. Make sure you open them up, but if you're not, if you're not on our email list, just 
go to learnmagictoday.com, sign up for the newsletter because then you'll be in the loop of what we're doing. You'll get a weekly email that'll let you know what our schedule is because every week we have a schedule and it's full. A lot of magic going on. Let's see, where were we? Here, let's take a look at the split. I showed you the handling of the gimmick and how to shoe it in. And then I said I used a split technique. And here's a little brief look at it, which gives you a good exposure. This is really clever. I came up with this. It's, it's kind of like an original move on multiplying the sponge ball and in, in, in how many you can pull out. Anyway, here we go. Hold it behind. This hand's going to come up. It's going to take this ball with these two fingers. I'm holding this ball with my just uh, finger pop, finger pop. So it's not like, like that. Just my finger is holding it up against the back of my hand, but I don't want to be like this. It's, it's tension. So I have to relax. So you want, to, you want it to look natural. So I, I have this relax. I don't want to have any tension. So when this hand comes up, I'm going to have this like this. I'm going to grab it here, and I'm going to keep going forward. So when I do it, I go forward and I pull it. See, so it looks like this. And I'm pulling it off, right? So I'm taking this one with my index finger and thumb. I'm moving forward. Then I'm pitching the other ball in the same place, and then I pull it away. Now you might need more information than that, but basically you should see how this is. This move right here is beautiful, how I use it in a routine. I teach you the full routine. This is an unbelievable sponge ball routine. Anybody that learns it doesn't alter it. It's got everything you need. If you're interested, go to conjureclub.com. Boom, this is where you get it right here. Conjureclub.com gives you full access. Guys, it's $1.87 a week. $97 a year gives you full access to all the live sessions. I do sessions on Tuesday and Wednesday night. On Wednesday night, I do the Dollar Magic Club. This is cool. Guys, this is something new that I started. We have another program coming up. There's Wednesday's going to be a double header, just like Tuesday. On Wednesday night at 8 p.m. right now, we do the Dollar Magic Club, and this is such a great, unbelievable. Don't miss it. Sign up today, theconjureclub.com. Don't miss out. We go live every week. It's pretty cool what's shared in these classes because there's a lot of original material. We go into the the blocking. It's going to completely change the way that you approach magic, period. You're looking and seeing all these new things that are coming out. You're going to have so much access to our library. We have over a thousand videos. Easy. I mean, there's so many videos in there from because I've been doing this for so many years and I teach something different all the time. It's pretty amazing. Let's look at another video. Mm. This would be a very cool bridge. I wouldn't perform this by itself. This is going to be better in the context of a sponge ball routine. And this ball, you can bring it into play and people are going to think it's one of the balls. But you have to be able to put balls into your pocket. What I like to do is I like to bring it into play on a split. Let's look at that. Okay, here's the gimmick. I'll put it in my back pocket. Here's these two balls. Here's the one ball. Now when I do the flurry, okay, I have two balls in my hand. When I do the flurry, I call it the flurry because I do all these ball productions and they keep appearing in, in a section of the routine. I'm holding this ball by the back, you know, just pinching it with my index finger and thumb. And the audience can see the whole ball, so I'm not holding it like this. I'm pinching it from behind. This hand is going to come up and grab this ball. Now, I'm holding these balls. And usually when I do it, I have, I usually have two balls in my pocket and two balls that I'm using in the routine. So I'm using the routine, and then I start putting them in my pocket. And when I put them in my pocket, I steal a ball with that ball. I get captivated watching the video. I'm listening to it watch. I'm watching it like you guys, if there's anybody watching right now. Thanks for joining me. That split move is how I shoe in the gimmick, which is really, really slick. It is so slick. Switch. There's a book. It's so good. If you read it, it's going to change everything. You're going to see how magnificent this fundamental is because the audience has no idea there's a switch going on. So if you can switch something in, it happens all the time. Have you ever seen the gag where the guy's like a fake tree? You're walking down the street and then it moves and everybody freaks out because they assume it's a tree. They're walking down the street, there's a tree, there's a tree, there's a tree, but it's what they don't know. It's. This, is, this is because man makes the assumption. So the human nature of man is uh, they make assumptions. And that's why magic is so effective. 
you can really clean that up and make that switch so unbelievable, which you can, it makes the magic so much stronger. And then there's no hiccup or hesitation or tension or something that gets in the way where the audience becomes distracted by it because all tension gets attention. Don't be fooled. The audience sees tension. It's very obvious when there's tension in the frame. Tell me if it's true or not. See? So don't think that when you're in the frame, you can get away with having tension. Are you aware of the tension that you have when you perform magic or perform a slate? Do you know where, what areas you, you lack confidence? That's the area you want to address. We address that in every session because I am a fan of Fitzky. I even have a program called the Fitzky Files. Guys, we got so many programs. Look at this. We've got uh, historical collectible. This is all about collectible pieces. Do you guys like collectible pieces? You know, where you see the collectible piece, you want to know a little bit of history about the collectible piece. I have a show called Historical Collectible. All my members that have access to the library, I send out links on all the shows that I do. I have a ton of different shows. Tarbell Treasure. This is unbelievable. This thing is loaded with incredible routines. There's a book that every magician has. It's called the Tarbell Course of Magic. There's eight volumes. There's a ninth one that was added, but it was a humorous piece. Basically, and there wasn't really eight volumes. There were uh, pieces added to Harlan Tarbell's work originally back in the 20s. We're not going to get into the history of Harlan Tarbell and Course of Magic, but every magician I know has these in their life. And these are treasure to every magician. We, we, we revere these books still after many years. Books of magic are fascinating. And I I have a program called the Tarbell Treasure, and these are not from Tarbell. The magic that isn't from isn't from Tarbell. The magic in the Tarbell Treasure is inspired by Tarbell, the Tarbell Course of Magic. So it's cool. I have so many. If you're interested, guys, text me, right? Just text me a question. If you have a question, just text me at 407-214-5178. You have any question about magic, text me at 407-214-5178. Text session. I got a program coming up in November. You don't want to miss. If you're not a member, this is going to give you a real taste of what I teach, how I teach. It's very different. I have a, a signature method. I I was in Universal Studios and Walt Disney World because of the method that I developed in instructing people how to do magic. I could take a person that's never done magic, and when I teach them the fundamentals of the frame, they understand what's motivating what they're doing. It's a completely different way of approaching magic. So if you're interested in checking it out, guys, look at this. Expo. Expo to 407-214-5178. You will get an invite. This is going to be November 12th. It's a Tuesday at 8 p.m. I'm doing a Magic Expo live in the Zoom room, and I'm going to be sharing some stuff that you can perform for the holidays. It's not necessarily Christmas magic. It's walk around anywhere. You're with people. You can do these effects, and they're going to leave an impression. Let me tell you, these are great routines. If you're interested in coming, it's a complimentary end of the year session that I'm doing. It's a series. Text EXPO to 407-214-5178 and you will get the invite because I have limited seating. So not everybody's going to be able to get in. My VIP, obviously you guys get in, but if you're not, if you don't have access to the library or all the things, you can still get into this. I'm making it available to people that are interested in checking out sessions because we do that every week. What I'm going to do on those three nights is what I normally do every week. It's a lot of talking. All right, we'll see. Check this out. Play a little game. Which hand's it in? Which hand? You can see which hand's it in. All right, watch closely. Now, I put this on my left hand like this. Right here. I put this right here, this part. I put this part right here. When I push... I'm forcing it to go inside out because the ring of my, my fingers is making it easy for me to push it inside out. You see, so I'm pushing this inside out. Now, I'm going to push the black ball, I'm going to push it completely inside out. The black ball is going to stay in my left hand, and I'm going to swing that square. Once it's freed, I can just swing this into my right hand. But when you do it fast, they're just going to see red going into your hand. So you're like this, right? And like that. You don't see anything, really. 
So yeah, I make it so you guys can pick it up. The handling is broken down, the blocking, the framing, the pace, everything. We go, we break it down. You can take this classic piece, use it as a bridge, learn the, the split, the whole sponge ball routine. Speaking of sponge balls, before we go, just wanted to show you some other sponge items because this, this is, check this out. This is banana. It's bananas unlimited, you know. I don't know if you like banana splits, but banana splits are delicious. So we have some ice cream cones and everybody gets one. So I have plenty of bananas. I have plenty of ice cream cones. <laughs> Stupid in it, look at this. These are sponge items and they can become bridges in any routine. We show you how you would construct a magic show. You begin to be able to define what, what this is, what is that. This is a bridge, this is a complete routine. I can put this bridge in with it, I could put it here, I could put it here. This is really interesting to learn because you could put together magic shows quite easily once you have access to all the material you need as far as all the routines. And then we have access to all of the props so you get to see how all the magic is done. You know, before you would have to go into a magic shop, you'd have to buy the trick and then you would learn the secret. We give you access to all the secrets. You get access to all the tutorials, this library is loaded to the gills. You get access to it all. There's so many programs inside. $1.87 a week. When you're a, when you're an annual member, it's $97 a year. You break that up, divide it by 52, you get $1.87. Guys, we do live streams every week, multiple ones. And then we the, take the replays, put them up in the library. You get access to all of that and everything before that I've ever done, which are over a thousand videos. So check it out and join us. This week, we get together on Tuesday night, a session from the Levitator Masterclass. And then at 8 p.m., we have the Secrets of Conjuring and Magic. That's a double header on Tuesday night. Wednesday night, the Dollar Magic Club, 8 p.m. Sign up today, theconjurerclub.com. Guys, if you're interested in getting a fire wallet, text me at 407-214-5178. Text me. Doesn't matter, but you got to let me know your fire wallet. So text me fire wallet to 407-214-5178. I started on my YouTube channel. I put up on Sunday night, last week's Monday Night Magic special. I completely edited it and I uploaded it into YouTube. So if you wouldn't mind, go to the YouTube channel and watch, just click it, like it, share it, give it some love and care. Appreciate you liking this broadcast, sharing it with your friends, coming back and seeing some more because we got a lot of stuff coming. I can't jam it all in. It's a 30 minute show. I'll see you guys next week. If you guys are coming to the sessions this week, I got some great stuff planned. Real excited to get it in. I'll be here next Monday night for another adventurous journey for the Monday Night Magic Special. Have a great week.